Hello, my name is Sarah. Welcome to the It Is A Sarah podcast. Today it is Monday, February 26, 2024, and this is episode 129. I'm coming to you from the Netherlands, so excuse my Dutch English. I love to knit, I love to crochet, and I love to talk. So that's the perfect combination for making this podcast. Um, I make my episodes in Dutch and in English, so be sure you pick the right one. Today I have a special episode for you, although special, a little bit special, because I want to share all my whips with you, all the things I have on my needles. Uh, I will talk a little bit about all the things on my needles. But before we will dive into that, I want to share a little bit about what I'm wearing. Um, I'm wearing my shawl and um, I, I don't often wear it when I'm filming for a podcast, but I, I definitely think that this is my most worn knit from this winter. Uh, I finished it, I think, in autumn, late summer and autumn. And I wear this shawl all the time. It is the skimming shawl. I will show it in one minute, but it's warm and nice around my neck right now. Uh, this is the skimming shawl, shawl uh, from Sophia Tales. Oh, yeah. Uh, normally, I um, uh, insert little pictures of the patterns and the designers. I really uh, love that when I'm watching other episodes that you can see how the original design is. But today I will not do that because I don't have the time for it. Oh, I do have the time, but uh, the laptop on which I always edit my uh, episodes um, is needed by one of my kids. Um, my daughter has a, a, a school uh, a project and uh, she needs a program that's only on that laptop. So um, not much editing today, I'm sorry. But there are all show notes, links in the show notes. Uh, um, I linked all my reverie pages and you can see all the information you need right there. But this shawl is really, it's a triangle shaped shawl and it's really uh, around my neck all day. <laughs> um, especially inside the house. I, I hardly wear it outside because I have big warm woolly shawls um, that matches my uh, um, uh, coat and my cardigans more than this one but in the house I always wear this one and I know there are different ways to shape your triangle shawl around your neck I don't really use them I just wrap it around my neck and sometimes it is sitting perfectly and really nice I think this is quite perfect how it's now but most of the time it isn't um yeah it's just hanging around my neck and uh, and uh, keeping me warm so it's really lovely so i wanted to show it again because uh, i wear it so much lovely i love the colors i have a second one uh, or actually this is my second one um but i hardly wear that one it's hanging there but i hardly wear, wear that one anymore just the dark colors are perfect um yeah to uh yeah they match better with the rest of my wardrobe i guess but i don't need it right now because i always get temperatured <laughs> do you say it like i always get warm when i'm filming a podcast when i'm chatty and i want to show uh, my cardigan too this is my avena cardigan it's originally a sweater pattern and when i searched for my revelry page i discovered i have three revelry pages for this project um, my knitting revelry page and i also made a separate project page for the sticking part the sticking process um, so i linked them all down below and i described quite detailed i guess how i sticked it and uh, maybe it's interesting for you maybe not it's all uh, but it's all down below um yeah um I really love this cardigan, only the neckline is quite white. Uh, I did it on pur purpose, I think you say it like that. Um, when I originally made a sweater, because I don't like high necklines, but it's a bit too high. And I tried to add a color and that didn't work out. It was not um, how I liked it. And now I'm, every now and then I'm thinking about adding a little border, but it didn't happen yet maybe it will happen once maybe not but um, this is my only light uh, garment that i made myself 
Uh, and when I uh, was wearing the Arctic light shutter for my, uh, for my daughter last week, I thought, oh, I should add more light uh, things to my wardrobe. And I have some light yarn, so that will be happening. But I feel very good in uh, very proper. It's good for the energy. But I always I also love the dark colors. They are also good for my energy. Um, so yeah, that's that. And I'm wearing my hinterland dress. I make myself. I'm very proud. The fabric is not uh, of good quality. It was cheap fabric, and yeah, um, it was okay uh, because I still was learning to knit a dress. But I won't buy cheap fabric anymore um, because uh, the quality of your materials um, um, uh, creates a big part of the uh, of the process and it makes it hard jumping and I love the look of the fabric and I also uh, am really 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 proud of myself that I could sew this dress uh, it really reminds me um, that uh, if you want it enough <laughs> you can do it if you want if you really want it you can do it um, but next time I will uh, I will use better fabric Okay, let's dive into the work in progress. The reason why I chose to show you, uh, to, to make a, a work in progress parade this episode is because I worked um, a little bit on uh, uh, all of them, except one, except one. Uh, normally, I, I always um, have several projects on my needles. I really love that because I want to have something uh, for knitting, something crochet. Uh, something uh, challenging, something easy, something big, something little, something to travel, a sock, you know, uh, all the different things and uh, that works uh, pretty good for me. Uh, but most of the time, uh, one project is getting my main focus, my, the, the most of my attention. So that's growing uh, uh, the, the most in a week and I, I make the most process and on one and it will be finished. and. I, and and I, that's how I choose the projects I want to talk about on my Monday's episodes. And now I was thinking and I thought, I worked on all, so let's share them all. And I made a list, it was quite interesting. I love my Ravelry page to, to, for those um, insights in, in your projects. Um, uh, it's very clear and um, I have 11 work in progresses, works in progress. Um, eight knitting projects and three crochet projects, uh, three blankets, two pairs of socks, three sweaters, one cardigan, one vest and one hat. And uh, six of those projects are for myself. I'm a selfish knitter, so it's good that there are six for myself. Uh, one is for my little niece, three projects are for my family, so also for myself, those are the blankets, uh, and one is for my gift box. So I, I'm not sure um, uh, who the owner will be. I have five fingering weight projects, one sport weight, four DK, and one worsted. So, okay. Um, I was thinking uh, about changing the things on the nail, what's on my nail, but uh, I don't have the time for that. So only that one is on my nail, but we won't start with that one. We will start with the blankets. Um, and I will start with the only project I didn't work on last week. And uh, I have a lot of beautiful project bags. My table is filled with all the beautiful project bags. And um, none of them I've bought myself. They were all gifted. I know, I'm very spoiled. I never asked for it. But they are all gifted to me by lovely um, old Dutch project makers. Uh, and I even own more beautiful project bags. But I didn't have more projects. <laughs> so, so I, uh, yeah, it's really a luxury, I know. This one is made for me by a Dutch uh, knitter and she gave it to me when I organized uh, a knitting day and uh, this is the project bag for my northeasterly blanket it's quite a big bag so that's really uh, nice and my northeasterly blanket is my memory blanket and I made a blanket episodes uh, a few weeks ago two weeks maybe only so I won't go uh, uh, I had this 
I only share the works in progress. I won't deep dive in them. I, I will try. I want to. I want to deep dive in every single project, but um, don't let that happen. I will do that another time. But uh, this uh, Northeasterly blanket, a pattern by Scanians. I hope I pronounced it right, uh, is really uh, one of my favorite projects, but it's not growing very hard. But I, I checked and I have five fingering weight projects. So uh, every time I finish such a project, a fingering weight project, I add a little bit. Um, so uh, that will happen here too. And uh, this is my only project that's on my needles for quite some time, for a few years even. Uh, um, since I finished the um, the coziest memory blanket. I made a pillow uh, case of uh, of that blanket. Uh, this is my only one, and it feels really good. It's not um, uh, it, it's not pressing on my shoulders. It it doesn't need to be finished. It's just an easy peasy, slow growing project, and um, uh, as a memory blanket uh, should be, and it's really nice and fun. My second blanket is a crochet one and it's living in my crochet basket. I own this basket for quite some years now. I found it in a thrift store and I really love to, to uh, keep my projects in baskets. It looks nice. We have baskets all over the place. Uh, several projects are living in baskets and not in project bags and I just love it. And in this basket is living my granny stripe blanket and um, uh, I, I need a granny stripe project in my life always, I guess, um, and the granny square project. I just love them. And uh, this is really a big, uh, a big blanket. And I uh, wanted to use all my um, not so beautiful uh, fingering weight leftovers. And I really uh, think it's uh, amazing how all the yarns that you don't really like and I know it's personal it's personal taste there are quite some bright yarns and blues and greens and I'm really uh, a brown lover I love the neutrals and the more darker colors but I own quite a lot of bright sock yarns uh, especially and also other fingering weight yarns and I think it's amazing that when you put together all the things you don't really like they create a beautiful whole and that's that's what i th think is so inspiring uh, 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 at scrappy projects um yeah cherish what you have and it always will be beautiful um i thought it was a good idea um when i think the, the um probably our son will uh will move will how do you say it in uh, in english uh our son is 19 years old and he he will start a study and um uh when you, your study is at a place not near your hometown you go uh you 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 will live on yourself but for stu students we call it you go op kamers or in in belgium they say uh, op kot. Uh, so you don't really move, you don't really have a house of your own, but uh, oh, it's it's a bit as a campus, I guess. When students are going to university, they live on a campus. Is that how you say it? How you do it in other countries? I don't know, but he will move out uh, to another city uh, to study. And uh, I asked him, do you want a blanket with you? Because he loves blankets too. And he said, oh yeah, that's nice. And I said, I'm making one, maybe that's one right for you. And he said, oh, okay, okay. And uh, what is, how is it look? Uh, how does it look? And I showed it and he said, ooh, that's quite bright. He said, when I have a small room and this is laying on my bed, I don't know. It's maybe a little bit too much. <laughs> so I said, do you want another blanket in, in darker colors, more neutral and he said I would love to and, and I thought ah yes I have another blanket to make and I was thinking about uh, all the yarns I could use for that and of course I need to buy yarn for that because I don't have enough in my stash I guess 
I'm not sure. Uh, I, I won't, I'm not buying, I'm fasting, I'm not buying anything until Easter, but um, it was, uh, it, it is nice to look forward to, <laughs> to, to cast on a new blanket for my son. I will miss him when he will leave uh, our house, uh, uh, so uh, it's nice to give a heart jumping thing with him. Um, okay, my third blanket is also a crochet one, and this is a, also a special one. This is my Prague blanket. We visited Prague uh, last November, and um, uh, it was my birthday that week. It was a very special week. We were there with our family and friends um, for a sport event for our son. He's a rugby player, and he had a tournament right there, and we all um, uh, traveled uh, to Prague to uh, support uh, his team and uh, it was very, uh, 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 very, uh, very nice week and um, our apartment was in uh, nah, quite near a lovely yarn shop called the Yarn Queen in Prague so I visited that shop twice and um, I was really inspired by all the beautiful colors of the tiny houses and the big buildings in Prague itself and in the villages around Prague uh, and I love the colors so I want to make a memory blanket inspired by those colors and uh, all this yarn was gifted by my parents and my sister and her husband for my birthday because I, I celebrated my birthday there and it's Filcolana Arbetta Santnes Sunday and Santnes Pergint Tin Pergint. I didn't knew you had the, there was Tin Pergint, a fingering weight Pergint, and I really love it. Um, so that's really lovely, and um, yeah, I really love this project. It's a slow growing project because again, fingering weight uh, blankets. Uh, it uh, it costs some time. And I only work on this at, in the mornings. It's my uh, my magical morning work. Uh, I start my day always with uh, 30 minutes of crochet. Uh, I think it's very important, if you can, to start your day with a hard jumping thing. Uh, because why why wouldn't you not? That's not the right. Why shouldn't you? I, I, why wouldn't you? Why wouldn't you? I don't know. Uh, if you can start your day hard jumping, then just do it. So I do that every morning and uh, it's really lovely. I uh, am inspired, oh I forgot, the granny stripes are also, uh, uh, that's a pattern from Lucy from Attic24. And also this one is inspired by the fireside blanket from Lucy from Attic24. Only I used uh, traditional squares. And uh, my, in my referee page, in my referee notes, you can see how I divide the colors uh, for the different squares. So really lovely. And this one is living in a basket, yeah, in our living room. Okay, those were the blankets. Let's see, the socks, we will go further with the socks. I have a little, um, how do you call this? In Dutch we say a bakje, a houten bakje, a wooden scale? No, scale is a bit. Wooden cup? A wooden cup? I don't know. Uh, but in this uh, thing, in this wooden thing, are some uh, sock yarn scraps. And I am making uh, DK Scrappy Socks. Um, it is a sock tube. This is for in my gift box. I am really dreaming of a gift box filled with uh, DK socks, with uh, hats, with fingerless mittens. So when it's December, I can open the box and I have all the knits which I can share with all my loved ones. And um, uh, it never happened. It's my first year uh, I am actually filling the box. I'm dreaming of it for quite some years. Every time when it's December, when it's Christmas time, I, th I am thinking, oh, I would have loved to knit my children and my husband and my parents and my, my parents-in-law and all the, all the people around me, my friends. I would love to give them a hand-knitted pair of socks or a hat or a fingerless mitt or whatever. But I, I never do <laughs> because there's no time. I also want to knit myself something in the Christmas time. Um, and this year I thought, okay, let me fill the box du during the year and uh, uh, I can give, uh, uh, I, yeah, I only have to add some heels because I'm not sure, I think this one will be for one of my girls. 
um, uh, but I'm not sure. So I only, when I really know what I want to give to who, I only have to add the heel at the right place for an, with an afterthought heel. And I really love the idea. So this one is finished. And I started the second one. I held two fingering weight yarns double and uh, I make stripes of five rows. You can check my notes to see exactly how I knit those socks. And uh, yeah, it's really uh, addicting, so addictive. So um, uh, this is uh, standing somewhere in the living room and I can pick it up every now and then, just uh, knit a few rounds and keep my hands busy. And it's really uh, satisfying and hard jumping. Um, I have a second pair of socks and those are for myself. I think uh, these socks are the only one I didn't show at the podcast yet. I casted on them last week because we had some travel time. Um, when um, For my birthday in 2022, I received a lovely dark, dark brown chocolate skein colored um, Chocolate colored skein of merino sock yarn, uh, hand dyed by a Dutch dyer. It was a gift for my for my kids, and I really needed to knit. I really wanted to knit a beautiful pair of socks for myself because I loved that they gave me some beautiful sock yarn in my favorite color. My favorite sweet is also chocolate. So, <laughs> um, and when we went to Prague, I uh, casted on. Uh, a pair of socks because that's perfect for in your bag and in the car and um, whatever. Um, uh, just before that, I finished a pair of socks for my uh, daughter, for my eldest, do eldest daughter. She's the middle one, but the eldest girl. How do you say that? For my 17 year old. And uh, I uh, knitted her some drow socks, or it was based on the drow socks, and I don't know the designer's name, but the drow socks, uh, it is a pattern in the Lina book, 52 Weeks of Socks, Volume 2. It was gifted to me by a Dutch shop owner, and um, uh, I used a brioche stitch for that. And I think the drow socks were all over brioche, but I... Uh, I only did the knit stitches in the brioche stitch and uh, just um, knit regular pearls and I really loved it in her sock and um, they were really nice and cozy and fun house socks um, but DK weight and and I, and I knitted them for myself I casted them on, on for myself too and uh, I was really happy with it but the stitch gauge was a little bit looser and I am I am a very relaxed knitter, so my stitches are quite loose. Um, and there were several things. I just uh, knit my regular uh, amount of rounds for my size, but uh, I think the, the the row gauge was a little bit different, so they are too big. And also the heel was a bit too loose. And I always knit my socks at 2.25 millimeters, and I really realized I had to go down to two millimeters because that's better. Uh, I love the socks to be a little bit steady, not too loose. They long, they last longer and they look better. Um, so uh, I didn't want to rip out this because uh, the brioche stitch, it's quite hard to rip out for me. Uh, and I thought I already divided my skein in two uh, little yarn cakes, 50 gram yarn cakes, but it was not really happening. So it was, there was nothing uh, happening around this work in progress. And a few weeks ago, I was searching on the site uh, from Petite Knit, and I was actually looking for a nice pattern for my little niece. I, I, I am knitting it uh, already. Um, and I was looking for a sweater pattern, but then I, also scrolled, uh, uh, I, I find a sock pattern and I think, I'm not sure, uh, they were called the Amy socks. It, it, it was an off-white uh, sock yarn and um, it, they were very simple, uh, knit one, purl one with a, a very long leg, so it was a bit slouchy. And the simplicity of those socks uh, really touched my heart. Uh, it was really hard jumping and I I realized I want uh, such a pair of socks in my life with a brown yarn. Um, but I also realized my knit one, pearl one is not really, my stitches are dancing quite a lot then. So I wasn't sure about that, but I also um, 
uh, fell in love uh, with the twisted rib stitch uh, when I was knitting it, using it for my Arctic for my daughter's Arctic light sweater. The ribbing uh, was with twisted rib, and I I did know twisted rib, and I used it every now and then. But it was not really that I fell in love with it. But with the Arctic light, I did fell in love, and it was really hard jumping. And before I thought, okay, this is nice, but not hard jumping. And then I realized maybe I can make uh, a pair of socks in a twisted rib. So uh, I did cast on with the 2 millimeter needle and it's looking better and now I'm making it in yeah just one knit one through the back loop and purl one. I don't know if you my hand is looking a bit weird this way. <laughs> um, but I think it uh, it will be nice and it is my plan to just knit up the whole yarn ball so the leg will be quite long and hopefully uh, a bit slouchy. I love to wear leg warmers in winter, but I don't wear them in summer. But when it's in summer and we are camping or it's really cold, I love to wear socks too, but I miss my leg warmers. So it's nice to have a pair of slouchy uh, uh, legs on, uh, on my socks then. So um, yeah, that's uh, that's my, uh, my sock at the moment. Uh, no hurry, just... Uh, um, just an easy piece. I, I had some travel time and then I knitted on it and now it's laying there for quite a while. I think when I finish this these socks, um, I will first finish this one for before I will cast on another par a pair, but I don't, I'm not sure. We shall see. It is okay. Sometimes a work in projects is, is laying, uh, there's not happening a lot and then suddenly it is back on my queue. Do you say it like that? And then it's growing a lot. It's 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 not always steady. Sometimes it's whoop, <laughs> and and it's okay. Uh, but it's for me it's important. They are not laying uh, forever. They they are not uh, laying still forever. Uh, except my northeasterly, that's okay. Uh, oh, it's it's really cold. I don't I don't know if you can hear it, but it's really raining and the wind is coming from the east. And we live the Netherlands. We we uh, our country is next to the sea. And most of the time we have a sea climate. The wind is coming from the west or from the south and, and yeah, that's okay. But now it's coming from the east and um, the rain and the wind are next to our window, uh, bedroom window. And that's not happening quite often, but it's really cold and really cozy. It's perfect, uh, perfect weather for knitting and crocheting and for talking about knitting and crochet. And I really, I really enjoy this weather for one day. I, I walked through the rain this morning for quite a while with the dog uh, because I really love autumn and winter and spring is coming. And I love, I love the season. So I also love spring, but I will miss those cold, rainy, gray days. So I'm enjoying it a lot. The <laughs> rainy, gray, cold Monday. I know there are a lot of people who absolutely will not understand what part of that day I enjoy, but I really do. <laughs> okay, next one, uh, three sweaters I have. Um, I have my uh, Ariana sweater and I showed it last week, so I will keep it short, but I made quite some progress. I was watching a rugby game uh, last weekend and I'm really influenced by my son. I really love the rugby. Rugby is not a very big sport in the Netherlands. The Netherlands is a soccer country, I guess. Uh, but I hope it's a bit upcoming. I when you loved, when you fell in love, when you fall in love with rugby, you can't watch soccer anymore. I mean, <laughs> what kind of men are playing soccer? No, that's not true. That's not true. But, but the rugby, it's such a rough sport. And I must say, as a mom, when my son is playing, I don't always like to watch it because it's going very hard. But I really, yeah, I really love it. My, my favorite part is at the beginning of the game when you see all the players and their focus and their faces. I love that. But um, when I'm not really a television watcher, so most of the time I'm knitting or working on a project. But now I want to watch the rugby game. It was England Scotland, um, and um, uh, no Scotland England. It was it was in Scotland. Uh, so um, 
I really want to watch the game and then uh, the, uh, so crocheting is uh, easier for me to do without watching than knitting so uh, I uh, I worked on this one I ripped out my uh, uh, neck band because the central decrease stitch was on the, on the wrong place and um, I almost finished this sleeve I only uh, need to add two triangles and also uh, at the body uh, there are some more squares and yeah it's really growing very good and very fine and all my yarn ends are are, leave, uh, are hanging there and normally I keep good track of them but I really decided this time to weave in the yarn ends when the sweater is finished because maybe I have to rip out and I'm a bit afraid I will regret that. It's looking very messy right now and um, but yeah. I, I know I can uh, make myself believe that I don't mind weaving in yarn ends so um, I will need that superpower when in when it's time for weaving in. Okay. Um, next sweater is this one. This is the sweater for my little niece. It is the Monday sweater junior by Petite Knits, and I made some progress since last week. I finished one sleeve. Um this way i finished the sleeve it's it's feeling really nice it's lang yarn shawl silk and it was gifted to me by lang yarns a few years ago but it's really feeling very nice and lovely um i finished the sleeve and uh, i had perfect gauge so that's really nice when you just can follow a pattern and um i picked up the stitches for the second sleeve and uh, i really love knitting second sleeves and second socks because then um, you have to figure out uh, quite often for the first one and then the second one you know exactly what to do and uh, it's a bit busy on my needles I have my stitch markers hanging here uh, um, there are uh, uh, um, exactly enough stitch markers for every decrease I have to make so it is a sleeve without thinking too much just I, I think every seventh row I have to decrease and then uh, it's finished and um, I had a little bit left over. I didn't know how much I will have left, but this is uh, my leftover from this sleeve. So I will have a little bit left from this skein for the other sleeve. And then I will knit that up for the body and I will add another color. But um, it is also uh, one of the things I can pick up and knit on quite easily. I had a uh, not so much alone time the last weeks because it was holiday and my uh, youngest one was sick last week and um, I really uh, love those kind of works when you don't have to think you can just pick it up and knit and and do a chat in between and do not pay too much attention to your knitting um, so I really love to have those projects. You're keeping your hands busy without uh, uh, needing your mind too much, your head too much. Um, so yeah, that's really nice. Okay, then the next sweater is in this beautiful project bag. I, I, I hadn't used this for quite a long time. It's also a vintage fabric and it's really bright and funny. It's also made by Rochelle from Marcella Bell, a Dutch project bag maker and uh, they were all gifted to me so really uh, really spoiled I'm a spoiled, spoiled lady and this project is really hard jumping to me because it is a project with a lot of Sarah sauce or actually not really a lot let me hang it on um, one of my uh, biggest resolutions for uh, 2024 was to put more Sarah sauce on my creative uh, projects. Uh, I love knitting beautiful patterns, but I also love playing with those beautiful patterns. I don't have the desire to design myself, uh, uh, but I, uh, I really love to combine things and to play with things. But because there is such a big amount of beautiful patterns, I never, yeah, I, 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 there's no time left for it. So um, all my knitting time and crochet time is filled with, pet, with following patterns. So it was really 
high on my list to create more space for uh, playing with all those beautiful patterns. Um, and this is my first uh, play. Um, my yarn stash is keeping me busy. Um, thinking about my yarn stash. What do I own? What do I want to own? Uh, does my yarn stash fit me? Still fit me? All the colors, all the things. Uh, is it hard jumping to me? And do I cherish what I have? Um, quite often we are focused too much on uh, collecting more and more and more. Not only yarn wise, but um, yeah. And um, it is not satisfying to own more and more and more. It's, it's much more satisfying to cherish what you have. And um, uh, yeah, that's really a process I'm in. And I'm really cherishing what I have. I think again, uh, it's, it, it is uh, fingering weight held double, all my yarn scraps. It's really special to see how so many different pieces can create one beautiful garment. Um, and I really love that. Uh, I did the modification in the neckline. I love to have my neckline a little bit lower. So uh, that is happening. And I won't deep dive into this. Uh, uh, the details about my Sarah Source projects I, I share in my Heart Jumping Friday videos. Um, that's a membership uh, on YouTube, a paid membership. Um, um, and I make uh, extra videos every Friday. Uh, heart jumping friday and uh, i will take you more detailed with me in the process uh, in the sarah sauce process on friday so if you love that you are more than welcome and of course when this project is finished i also will share about it in my regular podcast uh, but it's really uh, keeping my hands busy and my heart jumping because it's really addictive <laughs> so those were my sweaters and then let me see what do we have left check my notes one cardigan oh that's my ultra worsted weight cardigan by ellie from skin their knits um it's not living in a project bag because it's living in a basket i love to have baskets around the living room filled with nice projects and yarn and this is um, how far I am. Uh, a few episodes ago, I shared my uh, swatches and on, and also uh, I, I. It was originally my plan to uh, use an off-white color, a neutral off-white color as the um, contrast color, but I really felt that it needed to be black. And uh, um, it, it, it sounded a bit as an unlogical choice because the white uh, would be more obvious, the, the contrast would be higher, but I followed my heart and uh, I chose black. And uh, now it's a low contrast and I really love it. I really love how it uh, will be. Um, the yarn is gifted to me by a Dutch shop owner. Um, uh, her name is Antonita from Wol uit het Zuiden. And uh, she really loves uh, uh, Spanish wool and Portuguese wool. And this yarn is uh, Dlana Rustica. Uh, and it was gifted uh, from her to me. Um, and uh, it's a, a, a non-superwash merino yarn. And it's really rustic. It's really soft, but there are little pieces of straw everywhere in it. Um, and um, uh, when I washed my swash, swatch, the yarn really bloomed and it was really there was really happening something special so i'm looking forward to that part of the knitting process um but we are not there yet uh normally i always finish my sleeves before i work on the body um but uh, the yarn balls were so big that uh, i i didn't want to break my yarn i could have but i didn't want to so this time i finished the body first i am quite near to the end of the chart and um, I have to see how much I, uh, length I will add. So I uh, want to check my uh, other garments for the right length and then I will make the sleeves. And uh, uh, I did make a modification to the pattern because I added a collar and I want to make a zipper in the cardigan. Um, 
And I realized because I'm fasting and I made the appointment with myself that I will not buy anything new until Easter, that I also could not buy a, a zipper. I don't have the right zipper, um, so I have to buy one, but not before Easter because I am fasting. And um, uh, that uh, made um, uh, my knitting uh, uh, at this garment uh, did slow down a bit because I don't need to hurry. It only uh, uh, I want to finish it with Easter when I can add the zipper. So it's really um, uh, normally I would feel a little bit more yeah hurried not in a bad way but oh, i want to finish it and i want to wear it and i don't have that now so i pick it up every now and then it's really relaxing color work really easy peasy um absolutely beginner friendly um i think um but it's just uh, such a self satisfying knitting work so it's really fun So that's my cardigan and then I have, oh yes, I have my vest. I think this is my newest cast on, also in a beautiful project bag, all they are. Uh, this is my cast on, uh, my latest cast on and this is a test knit for uh, Rebecca from the Korea Bea podcast. This is the Lauder vest. Rebecca um, did design the Lauder pattern and it's really, I hope I pronounced it right, but it's really amazing how she does it. The Lauder pattern has so many options. You can make a, a, a sweater with a high round neckline or with a V-shaped neckline. You can make a cardigan with a high round neckline or a V-shaped neckline. Or you can make a vest with a high round neckline or a V-shaped neckline. You can even make a vest cardigan with a high round neckline or a V-shaped neckline. All those options, I think it's really amazing she has them in all one pattern. So um, it's an all over cable pattern and I really, uh, I, I uh, just knitted the back panel and um, yeah, I really love it. The, the cables need to be blocked out. Uh, they scrunch a little bit together, but that's not, uh, uh, that's not a problem. But the blocking uh, will uh, will be interesting. I am knitting with Ulrika Natur. It's a yarn from Svarta Ferret. Um, and I bought it at Etna. Uh, it's a DK weight uh, yarn and it reminds me a lot of the Sandnes Pergint. And I really, I have the color 006 and it's a chestnut color and it's really a lovely headered color i really love it and also the cables it's a little bit the same as the arctic light although those are uh, two cables repeating themselves but um yeah it's just asking your attention when do you have the cable i cable without a cable needle so uh, it's it's quite relaxing um but this is a, a knitting that asks my attention still although the cables are not difficult um i have to pay attention and i finished the back panel and now i'm uh, i i love this uh, construction and now i have to pick up stitches and make the front panel and the other front panel and then uh, we go further but because i didn't have a lot of alone time i didn't work a lot on this uh, only this part and uh, tomorrow i think i will be alone at home and then i uh, will start uh, knitting the back pen the front panels and i'm really looking forward to that one so it's really a hard jumping process the pattern is not available yet because this is a test knit and uh, the deadline for the test knit is march 20 so i don't know when the pattern will be released i don't think long after that beginning of april maybe but uh, it's really it's really fun uh and then last but not least i have a hat um it is uh also a yarn from prague no prague i always say prague they uh they laugh at me every time but i have to say prague um it was very lovely when we visited prague we were with several people and um there were other parents from uh rugby players and um also from our town so uh um we were uh doing a lot of things together of course we visited the games but also with um 
uh, where there were different families and all the children together and we eat together and we uh, did all the tourist things together and we really had a lovely time and um, it was very sweet because uh, I re uh, they gifted me they went to the yarn shop for me because it was my birthday and they gave me this beautiful skein um, it was Malabrigo yarn and I don't have the label it's in my knitting book so I don't have the label with me but it's really all those warm colors it's really lovely and I decided that I uh, want to knit a hat for myself I I was a bit doubting about I, I uh, bought myself two skeins of off-white uh, check yarn there and i thought maybe i can make a shawl or whatever but then i thought now let me make a hat i'm not i don't wear hats quite often but uh, i really discovered the classic ripped hat by pearl soho i think that's really i don't know the knitting that pattern is really reloading my battery i really love it and it's also good for my gift box um and every time i knit such a hat and i try it on i love the feeling of a hat snucked a hat snucked around my head so um i thought okay let's make myself a hat and i don't know if i will wear it a lot my family can wear uh, the hat but i will have one so if i need one i i don't have one now so um uh, maybe next winter yeah i won't put it on because that's why i never wear a hat my hair doesn't like a hat <laughs> um but uh, it's really uh, it's really fun and nice and it's growing very slow but this one is living in my backpack i always have a knitting work in my backpack a hat or a pair of socks so i have something with me always doesn't matter if i have some unexpected waited time waiting time or something else there's always something in my backpack i can work on and um uh, that idea really is uh nice for my for me so uh, it, it is a nightmare that you <laughs> that you uh, suddenly uh, uh, am somewhere waiting or whatever, and you don't bring your knitting <laughs> or crocheting. You do doesn't have you don't have anything to do. That, that, that I I I don't want to uh, come in such a situation. Um, yeah. So those were all my work in progress. Yeah, I didn't forget one. No, those were all 11. Uh, I have uh, not really casting on plans. Yeah, of course I have plans, but not really, really uh, uh, things that I want to cast on soon. Uh, 11 is quite a lot for me to have on my needles, but it's, it's feeling good. But I really also love the finishing process. I really love it when the circle from starting someone uh, something to finishing something uh, is round. So I really love doing that. So I uh, will finish some projects before I will start a new one. It was my plan to start with the Lady Nana Duck this Friday because the knit along I would participate would start this Friday, but it's cancelled. Oh, it's really, it's really sad. Um, the knit along was organized by two Dutch knitters, one shop owner and one knitting class um, owner. You don't say it like that, I guess, but um, but um, through unforeseen circumstances, I practice that. <laughs> uh, the knit along is cancelled, so that's really really disappointing i did receive the book and the and the yarn package uh i will knit nana the lady duck but not now i will keep i will save it for later i think it will be a perfect summer project because it's really small and when it's really warm outside uh, i don't like to have big sweaters or cardigans laying on my lap so i think i will save it for the summer and i also uh, it's really interesting because now I'm really thinking about another uh, knuffel. Another. Uh, uh, thank you for all your uh, comments about the stuffies or the. the I, I was complaining a little bit about the stuffed animals. It sounds so not friendly, stuffed animal. But now I read all about the stuffies and the cuddlies, and that sounds much uh, sweeter <laughs> to me. So uh, the stuffy, I think I will use that as a working term. Um, my little niece is uh, still uh, dreaming about a blue rabbit, a knitted blue rabbit. And I was the one uh, who knitted it. She's dreaming about it. And she's, she 
keeps she keeps telling about it and uh, she will turn three at the end of March so now I am seriously thinking about knitting her a blue rabbit <laughs> and it's <laughs> It's quite interesting because I hate knitting stuffies. I think I hate it. I never done it, uh, and I hate blue. <laughs> I don't own blue yarn. I have a little, very soft blue. I don't know if it's enough. I found a pattern which is really sweet. Maybe I will knit her a brown rabbit with a blue dress. So maybe I will. There was a pattern, and I don't remember the name. And I will share all about it later if I really uh, will cast it on. But. There's a lovely rabbit pattern and with all the sweet clothes and um, maybe I will knit uh, and make a basket with a lovely rabbit and all the tiny clothes for the rabbit for my little niece. I, I feel like I'm a person who thinks that's hard jumping and it's quite interesting because not, not so long ago it would be a nightmare for me. <laughs> Things can change. So um, yeah, uh, I'm thinking about that. but. Um, uh, first make some progress on all the things. I have no idea. Yeah, the test knit will uh, get some uh, knitting time uh, definitely this week, but I have no idea which one will be finished next week. Let me promise you that I will fi have a finished object next week, but it is a surprise which one it will be. <laughs> I don't know if it's a big promise. Is it too big? I love challenges, but they uh, must be a little bit um there must be a chance i can realize the challenge i think there is a chance we will see it's a surprise for next week okay for now i want to thank you for watching um if you want to see more uh of me i have uh, oh i already told i guess the hard jumping friday subscription part a hard jumping friday episode every friday you are more than welcome there, but it's a paid part, so uh, be aware of that. Um, and if you're not, I'm also here for free every Monday. So maybe that's more than enough for you. I can totally understand it. Um, I uh, will enjoy the rainy Monday afternoon. It's still raining. It is 2 o'clock p.m., you say? Past morning, yeah, p.m. And um, I will uh, upload this video very quick, quick, quick. And then I will have some tea and knitting and enjoy uh, the lovely uh, knitting weather. Uh, yeah, and I hope tomorrow the sun will be shining a bit. That's also nice. Thank you for watching. I wish you a very nice week with a lot of hard jumping moments. If you can't find them, create them. Um, and uh, I will see you next time. Bye bye. Thank you.